Hello again, and welcome to our new unit, unit number four, which is Roots and Powers. We are going to start off by looking at the textbook and realizing that lesson 4.1 starts off with a math lab. Math labs are really fun to do, but uh, we're not going to actually take time in class to do them together. So if you uh, want to know some extra information or some extra practice on Roots and Powers, 4.1 might be where you start. So we're going to look at 4.2, and the lesson is called Irrational Numbers. So we want to make a difference here between an irrational number and a rational number. So an irrational number is a number that cannot be written in the form m over n. Essentially, what we're saying cannot be written as a fraction. So this here represents a fraction. Yeah, sorry here, I can see my pen is not quite working as well, but this should say the word fractions. So, no fraction. So let's ask yourself really quickly, what number can't be written as a fraction? Well, let's think of the number 2. Well, I can write down 2 as a fraction by putting it over 1. So, that's not a good example. What about uh, something like one-third? Well, that is a fraction. So that's not going to work either. So we've got to get numbers that cannot be represented as a fraction. We're talking about stuff like pi. Pi, of course, is that number 3.14. Never repeats. Never uh, ends. So that would be one. Another one would be like the square root of 2. Square root of 2 is a number that never, never ends, never, never repeats. So square root of 4, well, that would be, would not be an example here because square root of 4 is 2. So that's not a good example. But a number that doesn't have an exact square root could be an irrational number. Now, of course, the opposite is our rational numbers. And these are the ones that can be written as fractions. So, like again, our example of 2 is really good. 2 over 1. Example of the root of 4. That's a really good one, too, because that would be 2, 2 over 1. And, of course, any fraction works as well. So our irrational numbers, there's not really much we can do with them. But we want to look at our rational numbers a little bit closer. And our rational numbers make up what we call our set of real numbers. These are the rationals and the irrationals. But the rationals can be broken down even further. So in our rational numbers, we can break them down into naturals. Now, natural numbers will be everything that's positive and everything that's a whole number. So we're not talking about decimals here. We're not talking about fractions here. So for a number to be natural, it has to be positive and it has to be no decimals. We've also got the whole numbers. Well, the whole numbers, again, are all the natural, so positive whole numbers. But we're going to add zero to the mix here. Now, technically, zero is not positive or negative, so it doesn't fit the definition of natural. So natural, and we got the whole numbers. Now we introduce negatives. So if we have an integer, will be positive, will be negative, or zero, but again, no decimals. And then finally, rationals. Rationals. Again, we've seen are all numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. So this is our smallest set because it's all the positives. Next smallest set, we just add one to it, we add the zero to it. Integers, and then our largest group is the rationals. So we're going to draw a little diagram here that shows us the real number set. So we start off in the middle with our smallest group, which is the naturals. And 
and we're going to put a little circle in this. Now let's throw a couple examples of naturals in here. Um, positive whole numbers, 22, 19, 58. These are all examples of natural numbers. Okay, so now the next largest circle will be our whole numbers. And our whole numbers are anything that we consider natural, or we're going to add zero to the mix. So for our examples here, we could have, again, 19, because that's a natural and a whole number. Could have 4. And of course, we're going to put 0 in this one as well, just to illustrate the point that 0 is the one that we add to this set to make it a little bigger. Next, we've got our integers. And we will throw this as our next biggest circle. Again, I do apologize for the pen. It's not quite working the way it should. So now we've got positive and negative numbers. But again, no decimals or fractions. So we could have negative 13. Could have 8. Our number 19 again, which come through because it does fit in this as well. Uh, another one, let's go negative one. And then finally, we have our rational numbers. This is our largest circle. Now we can include our fractions and our decimals. So we can have numbers like 6.3. Number 19 would still fit, because it is a rational number. Uh, 15 would work here. Now let's go another fraction. Let's go uh, 10 over 71. Any fractions do work. And then, of course, sitting outside, we've got our irrational numbers. And, of course, this is pi, the root of 8. All these are nothing to do with our circles in the middle. So you can see that numbers belong to, or can belong to multiple names. Number 19, we see it as a natural, as a whole, it's an integer, and a rational. And of course, like number like negative 13 would be an integer and a rational. And then numbers like 6.3 would only be rational. So this is a nice little guide to make you understand exactly how the numbers interact and how what names we could use for them. Let's flip our page and actually do some examples here. In which number set do the following numbers belong? Okay, the number three. Well, the number three, if you look back to our circles, it's a natural. It's a whole. It's an integer. And it's a rational. So all of our positive whole numbers will have four labels we can give them. Next one, 4.5. Well, 4.5 is not natural, it's a decimal, it's not whole either, it means not ira uh, integer, so it can only be rational. 
10 over 71. Again, not a whole, not, uh, not natural, not a whole, not an integer, only rational. Negative 4.5. Well, the negative sign's the big key here. Negative sign means it can only be uh, integer or rational. Because it's a decimal, it can't be an integer. It must be a rational. We've got pi. I'll put a little line here. We've got pi. And pi is that funny one. It's a irrational number. So I'll put IRR for irrational. Negative 3 over 9. Well, it's negative, so it's not natural or whole, but it could be an integer. Sorry, it can't be an integer, so it has to be a rational number. Can't be an integer because it can't be a fraction. Uh, one third. That again, fractions are only part of the rationals. And finally, the zero. Well, zero was that special one that is part of the holes. It too is an integer. And it too is rational. So labeling numbers will help us throughout this unit. Let's go to our textbook, page 211. Let's do two from the A's, five from the B's, and one from the C's.